Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. You can only change if you surrender to God. That's right. Even God cannot change you. So Without why would you, you think you can change that person? It's impossible. The, the, only the individual has to surrender. When you surrender to God, then you become that pliable clay that God can mold, reshape, and remove impurities and, and, and begin to form you into uh, that treasure vessel. But we have verse 7. Say, we have what? This treasure in earthen vessel. Your physical body is made out of earth, dust. So it's talking about, it's not talking about uh, your, your cup that you're drinking water with at home. It's talking about your body, your, your physical body. You have treasure in it. God put some secrets and great things inside you that, that they all need activating. When you activate it, good things start coming out of it. A, a piece of clay is just a piece of clay. It's earth. It has power, but it's only animated and becomes something when the spirit is on it. And we are spirit beings living in this earthen vessel. And God has put treasure inside of you. That that power needs to come out. For the power to come out, you need to surrender so that God can begin to do some things with you. And God has to do the same thing with your spouse. So if you marry an ungodly person and say, oh, they're going to be saved. Well, sometimes they get saved, sometimes they don't. But you made a covenant with that person. You say, you, if you make your bed, you lie on it. If you right. decide that the bed you want to lie on is a bed of fleas and flies, you made that decision. So enjoy it. You are, going to, suffer, you are going to suffer for a while. You say you're going to suffer body suffering. Well, that's what First Corinthians says. If you get married, you will suffer for a while. <laughs> we don't like to read those scriptures, but the word of God is clear about that. You know? So, but the mercy of God, which is the good news, you're going to spend time praying, seeking God, praying, fasting, asking God to have mercy on you, you know, and begin to kill devils that are operating in that person's life. And so that the word of God, which is the same thing we read back to first, no, now I know why God asked me to read that scriptures, uh, Second Corinthians 4. You so if the gospel be hid, verse 4, put verse 4 on for me. Second Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. So the possibility that some change will come is there. But you got to deal with the God of the world that blind and deafen them out of the way. And then you can kill those fleas and flies. Amen. 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 So what does that say to us? If you cannot change them except that God changes them, then there's no place for nagging. You cannot nag somebody to change. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Being undeceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Don't be unequally yoked. Yes. So someone, you know, just reading somebody's spirit right now saying, well, so I've made the mistake. I shouldn't have done it, but I'm married. Now I'm a Christian. What should I do? Should I now, I notice this person is unequally yoked. Should I now get out of the marriage and, and just leave? I don't think so. Uh, you know, God hates divorce just as much. But what we can do when we've made that mistake is to come to God in repentance and cry for mercy and cry out for grace and cry out for God to force the treasure because God put treasure in every one of us. That's right. The godly and the ungodly. Everyone that comes into the earth had the light of God in them. That's right. 
Yeah. John 1, 9. Yes. We all have the light of God in us. And that light needs to come out. Yes. So we can pray, God, intervene in this situation and cause your glorious light to break forth out of this husband, out of this wife. I made my mistake. Yes, but Lord of oh God, your mercy is available. And I draw on your mercy. I call out to you to help me in this situation. Yeah. This man may be a devil, but Lord of oh God, you can turn this one around. Yeah. You, you can turn this life around. I am believing you for it. I'm, and don't nag. Because your nagging only causes God to step away. But you can prophesy goodness and mercy into that situation. Yes, we already said Yo, you can't change the person. No. So, but you can pray. Yes, you can pray. You can seek God. You can fast. This is because this, some things will not live except by fasting. Yes. And prayer. That's the word of the Lord. So you have to apply those. And, and there is a process of time. It's not going to be instant because you have to develop your faith to get to the level where the mountain must be moved. That's right. You are dealing with a mountain of corruption, yes. a mountain of, of that Satan has set up, strongholds. So you must give yourself time to seek God, to pray, to pray and not talk, talk. Your talking can't change anybody. You can talk till you go to the moon and come back. And what they say, talk till you are blue in the face. If you are blue in the face, that means you oxygen has, is leaving you <laughs> and you're going to die. The death process. So you, you, you're on the way to death. So <laughs> you might as well give up on that and just seek God. Seek God. You know, say early in the morning will I seek him. You just, if you know nothing to pray, just pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, I need daily bread for survival today. You know, you can be with the worst person to live with the worst person. It's never too late as a child of God. It can turn around. It's just there is temporary suffering. But that suffering is not compared to the glory that will come. Amen. Restoration can still come. Hope can still come. Solutions can still come. And greatness, there's light in there. That light must come out of that darkness. So Amen. you are there to tap that light out. Amen. 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 Now, just to add a little bit to this, um, when we're talking about being unequally yoked, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? We've got to understand that being unequally yoked has to do more with direction and purpose in life. The reason for marriage is purpose. Love grows, love wins. Marry with purpose in mind. When God chose Mama for me, He said, This is your beloved future partner. Please hear this. This is of crucial importance. If you're not married yet, Understand that God said, I'll make him a help, meet, fit. It was not about, oh, 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 I'm so in love. Romance. Romance. It was not about that. Romance is good. It's good. That's, it, it that's addition. But it doesn't cut the cheese. No, 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 yeah. no, no. No, no, no. There's, there's always going to be somebody else. 
that you think is more pretty, more handsome, more rich than the person you decided to get married to. But purpose, purpose, can you say that with me? Purpose. Purpose. To be unequally yoked is about purpose. If you have one oxen going in this direction and the other one wants to go in the other direction, you have unequally yoked. That's right. You've got to be heading in the same direction. That's right. If and the direction is north, we go north. We go north. You don't start going east. No. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's one direction, one purpose. You, you make a decision, okay. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the other person's agenda is no good. It's that right now, we've got to finish this thing that we are in agreement concerning and get it done. Move in that direction. Work at it. Finish it. Because if you don't, you're going to be alone. It is one, whatever it is that we're talking about, through the next, all of this month. Yeah, but that's what it is. Marriage is oneness. 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 The two shall be one. The two shall be one. So oneness means you have to work towards agreement and unity. It doesn't mean it's only one person's idea that works in the marriage. No. You come together. You say, come, let us reason together. together. It's the same system. God is one. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, they are one. So when he made man and woman, he made them one. The same, same system. You've got to follow God's pattern in the marriage. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they come into agreement let us, let us, Genesis 1 26, let us make man. He didn't say let me. It was no. not only one person, you know. No. Father made, but he said let us. Yes. Let us make. And you will see all three of them in action there. In the, uh, Genesis 1, 1, 1 to 1 3 says there was chaos and darkness. God made the heavens and the earth. Father, that's Father. He made the heavens and the earth. He said there was darkness and what? Chaos upon the face of the deep and you say the spirit of the Lord yes the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit moving upon the waters and God said let there be light this, this father said what is he saying speaking the word the word Jesus is the living word the word all three of them so we finish doing they are working together as a unity yes. reasoning together and working together as one so each part is playing out before, before our eyes and then he said now let us since we have finished everything we want to do, let us now make man. So, you're hearing one voice, but there's an us inside that one voice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Same in a marriage. Yes. Husband and wife, you might hear the head. Uh, I think we've preached on this so many times that you get it. The man is the head, not because he's, your, he's, he, he's the one having dominion over you. He has never been given that authority. Nobody. Oh. Nobody's giving dominion over any human being. You have to dominate things yes. that are made, but never human. So a man that comes and says, I'm your husband. <laughs> Where? Is that your man voice? Yeah, that's my man voice. <laughs> you know, I'm going to dominate you. <gasps> Where? Wrong address and wrong person. Not I'll be you. The, no. Definitely not you. Not me. No. So. <laughs> I know who I am. I, I'll come, bo come back with a deep voice. I know who I am. Git? So praise the Lord. <laughs> but you can submit, you know. You submit to one vision. Yeah, you know? we submit one to the other. One to the, that's what the Bible says, one to the other. You don't say, I'm the man, I don't hear my wife's voice. Well, the garden, they fell. That's the falling state. But they have been restored. So you can listen to one another. You know, you can listen to one another because your root now is God and God alone. Obedience to God's word. So you, you hear one another so that that goal that you have, that vision that is coming for the family 
can be accomplished. You are there to help. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, um, our final point today, um, I believe, is, is related to what Mama just shared. The first act of partnership was to establish order. First thing that we see partnership working on was to establish order. And the role of the man and the woman before doing anything is to establish order. In the book of Jeremiah, God spoke to Jeremiah and he said to Jeremiah in chapter 1, he says, I want you to tear down. I want you to pull down. I want you to do all of these things. And then I want you to build and to plant. The first step, please hear this. This is very, very important. And we're going to build on these thoughts in the weeks to come is to sit down together. It's not about we are now married. It's a honeymoon. It's all of this. The bliss of being married. It is to first and foremost come together, sit down, and say, what is it that God is assigning us to bring into order so that we can build and plant. Again, the passage in Jeremiah 1.10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. So we need to find out, you come from family A, I come from family B. What is in your family A? And what is in my family B that is not good that we need to root out right now? To root out, to pull down those strongholds, those iniquities, to destroy and to throw down so that we can build and plant. This is of utmost importance. God had to do it in Genesis 1. He had to bring about order yes. by speaking first of all, let there be light. We need to come together and we need to say, let there be light in this relationship. I wish I knew these things in the early days of our relationship as husband and wife. For us to tear down and to remove certain things because those things, until you do, you bring order to those things, you cannot effectively build and you cannot effectively plant. That's why if they are not married, it's never too late. You must go through a pre-marriage. Yes do a pre-marriage and know. And those who have been married for years, there are certain things they are operating on that ought not to be that they also need to get out of it. Yes. You know, it, it's a ignorance. It's a, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. What you don't know will hurt you. Mm. So you need to know, you know, and knowledge is important. Seek the word of God concerning everything in your life. Yes. Get knowledge in all you're getting and then get understanding. When you get that, you know, because you come in from a family, maybe you are Christians now, but your root, you say up, uproot, root out. God is telling Jeremiah, root this thing out. Yes. What's he going to root out? There are things in the root. The issue is in the root. The root 
gives nutrients to that plant. So yeah. you cut off, you cut off the stem, the root is still going to pop out the same issue. So uproot. What are you going to uproot? Maybe the foundation of where you're coming from. The, maybe the person you're getting married to is from a family that have shamanism. They, they've been serving idols. Mm. They've been consulting evil spirits. Mm. You know, but now you are a Christian. You only met in the, your generation. You are Christian, but that root is still there. Yeah. So the day you are not walking in the light, that the that root showing. shows up, becomes a familiar spirit, and and Satan have access to begin to mess up stuff that you are not aware. So those roots must be destroyed, and and then a new foundation laid, foundation built on the Word of God the blood of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. and his word and his Holy Spirit so that the root now is not producing the God kind. Yes. That's what we need. Yes. That's what's got to happen. Yes. Well, um, we cannot talk about everything one day. Yes. And um, we've basically just dealt with the Assassin called unrealistic expectations and uh, we're going to keep on talking about different things um, but what we've talked about today is of utmost importance I believe for every one of us those that are married those that are yet to be married, we can go back, sit down and say, wait a minute, um, what things do we need to uproot? What kind of things happened in your family? You know, when you go to the doctor, um, they do your history. Checklist. Uh, anybody in your family have cancer? Anyone have high blood pressure? Any diabetics? Anybody with mental issues? They check on those things. Because those things have a funny way of going on. And they have to be addressed. If we're going to have wholesome marriages where we are not alone, We've got to deal with some issues and not hide away from them. We'll recognize that these things are real things. We need to face up with them because there is a thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But we have the word of the Lord. I have come that you might have life and have that life abundantly. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you're faithful. Yes. You've given us an opportunity to hear your word, to receive your word, to be transformed by your word. We're declaring, oh God, wholesome relationship, partnership, marriages. We're asking, oh God, that you will heal us. That you will heal our marriages. You will heal our relationships. You will grant to those that are not married yet the grace of God and the foresight to see clearly the pathway of your directives. That, Lord, oh God, unrealistic expectations will not be part of our lives. But Lord, oh God, that we will rest in your goodness. We pronounce your blessings upon every aspect of our lives today. We say yes and amen to your word. Yes and amen to your will. Yes and amen to your purpose. Yes and amen, oh God, to destiny. Amen. Oh, thank you that the narratives of our lives are even now being ordered by you. Yes, Lord. So Lord, oh God, that our light will shine brightly. And Lord, oh God, that will fulfill your divine mandate and purpose you, for our Jesus. lives. Yes. 
We all know you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for healing marriages and Amen. relationships and birthing love in each heart. Amen. But most of all, help us, O oh God, to know what our divine purpose and mandate is so that we can do that which you've called us to accomplish speedily and efficiently. O oh God, you who anointed the first Adam, to move so efficiently by the authority of your word. And he was able to name everything that you presented to him. Speak its name. Lord God Almighty, give us that supernatural speed. Amen. We will fulfill your divine mandate speedily and efficiently. Yes. That our marriage is strong and whole will be a testament of the goodness of the Lord. We give you praise, Father. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For healing the marriages of this household of faith in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we call it so done. Amen. amen and amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. He proposed and she said yes. Next is planning the wedding, right? With divorce rates showing no signs of slowing down, you may be wondering what it is that you really do before and after the I do's. In Rings of Covenant, Apostle Mike Zeno covers the questions that should be asked, marriage assassins that need to be watched out for, and the role laughter really plays in a relationship. It's time to take a fresh look into what marriage is really all about. Rings of Covenant is available for $12, including shipping and handling. To order, please use the information on your screen. This is a must-have book for any stage of a relationship. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries. Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.